What's up, gentlemen? This is Rising Phoenix Podcast, the podcast about how to rise up after your divorce. I'm your host, Michael Rhodes. Let's get into it. Hello, and welcome to the show. This is episode 83. This is going to be a solo episode with me discussing my coaching program. So before we dive into what that is, what that means, let's talk about the why. Why am I doing this now? What what am I doing? <laughs> Probably more specifically to start with. So I'm, I'm going to start coaching men. I have been coaching men. I'm going to open it up and offer it out to all of you. But let's cover the why first, and then we'll get into the details of, of the what. Um, and the why is, uh, so my, my first uh, reason for starting this podcast, my initial reason, at least in, in, in my head, when I started thinking about doing it was getting my name out there so I could coach men. And the more I got involved with support groups and the more I saw the pain of men, my focus sort of shifted and I wanted to make this podcast a resource for those men. I felt like I could maybe reach more people that way, or I also just fucking loved it and and love it. So my, my initial reason was to get my name out there to, to coach men. That's, that's what I wanted to do because I wanted to use this shitty experience of divorce as a, um, or I wanted to find meaning or reason. And I felt like if I could coach men through it, then that gave me a reason because otherwise I, I wasn't seeing a reason. And, and, you know, sometimes I still struggle with seeing a reason uh, because mainly of my kids. I don't, honestly, I, I don't give, I don't really give a shit about her anymore. <laughs> it's uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think I hate her anymore, but I just don't, I'm very much on the, on the cusp of, or at indifference. It's, it's kind of where I'm at. That's not where I want to stay. I want to get to forgiveness, honestly, not for her, but for me, but this shit is still hard. So, um, I, I want to help men through that. And, and really the, 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 the reason we got to this point, I've gotten to this point now at this point is I had some troubles, let's say with my current job and I sort of felt like I was probably on a chopping block. And so I started thinking about what do I really want to do? Cause I don't particularly care for what I do. It's okay. It pays the bills and all that good stuff. But I started thinking about what I really want to do. And I just want to stay in this space. I want to help men. I want to do this podcast. I want to run the website. I want to start up local groups. I want to build this network for divorced men. But I can't do that as well if I have another full-time job that takes my focus away. I do the best I can balancing having a full-time job, being a father, and finding guests, interviewing, editing, all the stuff that goes with it. And then of course, moderating the the divorce support group on Facebook, creating local groups, all the things that I'm trying to do. I could do that much, much better if I was only doing that. But realistically, there's not one thing that I could do, at least I don't think so, that would allow me to do it for a living. I couldn't just do the podcast. I don't think. Um, I'm making a tiny bit of money from ads now, which you'll hear from time to time, but they are hit and miss in terms of the ability to even um, accept the ads or approve the ads. I don't, when, when they first launched it, so Buzzsprout is the host. They, they, this is when I upload a, an episode, I upload, load it to Buzzsprout and then they push it out to all of the other Apple and Spotify, wherever you're listening. I don't upload it to that. I upload it to Buzzsprout and they put it out. And so Buzzsprout started a, an ad program and you could opt in and they would play ads on your podcast. If you met a certain threshold and I'm fortunate enough to say that I met that threshold and then they would pay you, honestly, I think it was like 14 cents a listen or whatever. Or so every time you listen to an episode and you hear an ad, it's 14 cents goes in my account. I, I never made enough to, well, I think one month I made enough to pay the bill. So I pay Buzzsprout a certain amount every month. And I, I think one month um, I, I was able to, to pay that bill with just the ads. 
but that has kind of dried up for various reasons. I think there was excitement around the program when it launched and maybe it hasn't been successful for people. I, I don't know, but the options, the available ads for me to choose have pretty well dried up. So I'm probably, and, and but as this thing grows, there is a possibility that I could do my own ads with, you know, certain, I don't know about lawyers, but uh, the mediator, Isaac, from whatever the fuck episode that was, he and I have had some discussions. He's considering possibly doing ads on the podcast. And there, as I grow, there will be an availability for that, but it's not going to make six figures. At least I don't think so. I would have to have a lot of fucking downloads. And and I think I do pretty well. And sometimes it blows my mind. And and I can't wait till the end of the year to, I had a certain goal for this year and I am, I am past that. And I can't wait to, to announce like what has occurred this year in terms of growth and, and, and listenership. It's pretty fucking awesome and amazing, but it's still it's not enough to pay the bills and that's okay. I'm, I didn't start it for that, but my point is I'm trying to, if I'm trying to live in this realm where all I do is help men get through divorced, uh, get through divorce, then I have to do certain other things. So part of it is the podcast. And eventually there will be ads, I think, that will help uh, pay the bills. Uh, enough to pay all the bills? No, definitely not. So then the other piece of that is the website, divorcemensnetwork.com. I can run ads on there. I've had significant trouble setting that up with Google. I have uh, gotten some money for those ads, but very, very, very little. And I can't keep it running. I don't know why their plugin for WordPress, WordPress is the, uh, it's not the host. It's um, the designer, I guess it's where, I mean, I design everything myself, but well, I take that back. Ian Blythe, shout out to Ian, did all of the designing, most of the designing of the website, but uh, WordPress, I guess kind of hosts it, but not, it's not really, I don't know how to explain it because I'm not a fucking web guy, but, but anyway, the plugin that, uh, I guess the interface, maybe the plugin that, Google has for WordPress to use on websites fucking sucks. I've had to uninstall it a few times. It crashes the website. So I've had some significant problems there, but eventually I will get that up and running and there will be some revenue coming from ads on the website. And there will be more stuff in the future in terms of blog posts. I hope, um, you know, obviously the podcast is always there. The transcripts are always there. I'm going to go back at some point too and re-release some episodes, not, um, on, on here, as in, you know, episode 52 re-release or whatever, but I'll, I'll do blog posts and, and put out transcripts and, and also put them up on YouTube. Some of the older ones, I'm going to reach out to some folks and see if they're okay with me putting there because, uh, up until a point I, I was only, I would record video, but I would never use it I, because I didn't, I didn't have any intention. So, uh, you know, eventually that became something I wanted to do, but so I'm going to go back, but I have to ask permission of some folks to make sure that they're okay with me using video at this point. And some won't be, and that's okay, and I have to figure that out. And there's also solo episodes where I didn't do what I'm doing now, recording this on video. I just did audio. So I'll have to figure out something for that. But that's another part of the plan is to re-release um, some episodes. So anyway, the 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 divorcemensnetwork.com will always be sort of a, a hub of things, especially the local groups. It's going to change. I don't know if anyone is notice but all the the local group plans has completely changed it was going to be just on the website but now we're shifting to facebook smaller facebook groups that are uh, attached and affiliated with a larger divorce support for men group uh, but the, you'll find the links for those facebook groups on the website so now and it still hasn't i haven't made the complete transition now you go and you when you go to divorce-mens-network.com slash groups slash you see the map and you see a list of different groups. That's going to go away, and it's just going to become a list and links to Facebook groups. So, so my point is, there will be some activity on the website at all times. Any any new episode that comes out, I'm going to post there. Um, anyone that wants wants to write blog posts, sometimes I write some. Very very, uh, it's not very often. I wrote one for for my father when I turned forty on my forty fifth birthday. It's sort of a tribute to him because he didn't make it to forty five, and and so I'll probably do some of that stuff here and there, but. And there will be links to the Discord to, for for guys to get into the Discord. So, I guess my point is is the 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 website will always be sort of some sort of a hub, and and thus that will generate some revenue. And so, okay, so I got a piece here with podcast eventually um, adds revenue from that. 
revenue from the ads on the website and of course merchandise uh if you go to risingphoenixpodcast.com you'll see merch at the top you can click on that and get shirts hats coffee mugs all kinds of shit um not just for the podcast but also for the website um there's a straight out of marriage shirt on the on the website which as soon as i am fucking divorced i will i am going to buy that shirt for myself um and there's all different kinds of combinations with white logos red logos black logos white shirt it's it, there's there's a so many fucking uh, options. And I'm going to do some other shirts. I have some ideas. It's just who the fuck has the time. But eventually, I, I will get to that. Um, and so so merchandise is another piece. And I've, and I've made some money there. Not a lot. Again, very, very little. Uh, and Oh, also on the on the website, website uh, <laughs> recommended reading is something where you, you go and, and you can, you know, if you buy a book via that link, like um, I used to be a miserable fuck, single on purpose, the John Kim books. Uh, a couple other books. I don't know how many there are now, like seven, eight. If you click on those and purchase, it's their Amazon links. Then I, I also get a cut. It's honestly about 40 cents a book. So I'm not making a ton of money there either. But as time and exposure and all that kind of good stuff, that can be another piece, another component. Again, these all these are all small pieces of something that can potentially allow me to live in this uh, divorce support for men space. And, and lastly, and why I'm doing this episode and what we're what we're talking about here i promise i'm gonna get to the fucking point it is coaching and and that's the, that's part of the why the other part of the why is is i i want to help i i i think i've developed enough tools and enough uh experience to get through this that i can now teach these things and i have been through life coaching school i went to john kim's school um, i did take the alpha code which isn't a coaching program, but it fucking taught me a lot. And 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 the program I'm going to get to and explain at least the there's two programs. I'll get to the, to the larger one. It's largely based on the Alpha Code. To be quite honest with you, uh, it's very very similar. Uh, not to take any way, anything away from the Alpha Code. It's an amazing program, but mine's a little bit different. It's a little bit longer. Um, it's obviously more centered around and um, surrounded by divorced men, whereas the Alpha Code is not. Again, not a knock on the Alpha Code at all. Highly recommended if you're thinking about it. Um, I couldn't say a bad thing about it. Uh, my program is a little different, and um, but that doesn't take away from the alpha code. It's I, I definitely recommend that, but but I think mine's pretty fucking good too. So so that's the, the the why and the what. But also want to cover what does that mean for me going forward? Well, you, this podcast is not going to change. This is not going to be a um, living, breathing advertisement for my coaching program. That's just not what's going to happen. I am going to start doing some episodes about my coaching program, but that's not what this podcast is going to turn into. Is It's going to continue to be a resource for guys going through this. I'm going to talk about my coaching program because I think that there are, well, I don't think that there are elements of that that will help you as well. And some of them have been gleaned from guests and uh, experiences that I've had uh, through this podcast and I'll, and again, I'll, I'll get to that. I promise. So, but I'm, I'm not changing as a person, uh, my motivation, I still have a really good job and I don't, my motivation to do this is to build it. So I don't have to have that other job, but I have that other job. So I don't have pressure. I'm not going to give you the hard sell. I, I've a couple people have reached out and asked me about my program and I've sent them information and I'm, I'm not chasing them down. That's just not who I am. If I was dependent upon my mortgage payment being made for someone to hire me as a coach, then I probably would a little bit, but that's just, it, it, that's also not who I am anyway. Like I am in sales in my real job and I don't, I'm good at it because I don't bug people. I'm not giving you the hard sell. I can tell you the good parts and I can, um, you know, answer any questions, but I'm not going to chase anyone at this point. And I just don't think I would anyway to, to buy my coaching program. It's just, just not who I am. So what is it? So there are two programs. One is the triage program and it's, it's six weeks. It's, um, it's for guys just starting or, or guys that are really having trouble moving on and accepting. And, and it's, it's, but, but it's really around the, the guys in the first couple of months, I would say, and, and you know, time frames are tricky, but I would say if you're six months in, then perhaps this would be a good program for you. I, I don't I don't know for sure that's going to be based on you. So so what is that? It's six weeks and I'll get to the cost. I'm not going to be one of those, you know, email me and I'll tell you how much it costs. Fuck all that. I'll tell you right here and right now as soon as I explain it all. <laughs> um, so, so week one is the basics, eating and sleeping. I, I know for me, I didn't eat or sleep well at 
fucking all initially. And so we're going to cover some of that. We're going to cover some of, uh, you're going to get, um, if you want, you can opt in to get text alerts that say, Hey, make sure you're eating something today. Whether that be, even if you're drinking Pedialyte or what the fuck ever, you know, choking down some bread, make sure you're getting something in your stomach. Um, that's going to be, you know, every, as often as you want in, in, in the beginning, once you start the program and then you can, you can stop it at any time. It's just to make sure that you're taking care of yourself, at least in a bare minimum way, which is to get something in your stomach every day. And and believe me when I say, and, and if you're out there and you've been through that, been through this, you, you know what I'm saying is true. It can be really fucking hard to have an appetite to care about eating in the, in the initial weeks going through this. So uh, I can help you with that by, by reminding you and supporting you to make sure you get something in your stomach. Uh, the second week of the program, you know, I can get to the assignments too. I'll cover some of that stuff. The, the second week is, is about acceptance. It's about letting go. And that's really fucking hard. And you're not going to go through week two of my triage program and accept it. You're not. You're going to get some tools to help you get to that point eventually. And, and by the way, anything that I'm doing, any of these programs, they're not going to fix you. It's not going to make everything all better. It is going to give you some tools and support that is specific to getting through it that I used, but it's not a cure-all. It's not a panacea. I'm not selling you something that is going to take away all of the hurt and pain that this is causing. I can't do that. No one can. If anyone tells you that, they're full of shit. But what I can do is give you some tools and support to help you. So uh, week three is processing emotions. This is a big one. Uh, this is also in the, in the next program, which I'll get to. It's also something I learned in the alpha code. It's about dropping into your body and feeling your emotions in your body. So you can uh, help. It helps you clear them and, and survive them and not stay stuck in them. It gets you out of your head and into your body. It's pretty, pretty fucking important. Uh, the, the fourth week is info and podcasts. So we'll be covering different books and, and specific chapters that have helped me with certain things. Podcast episodes could be this podcast. It could be others. Um, it will be things that will help you get through, things to help you deal with whatever you're struggling with specifically and probably mostly around acceptance. But there could be other things that pop up. Um, you know, I'm struggling with how to deal with kids and, and we can talk about some books and some chapters and some podcast episodes that will help you. So that, that would be week, uh, week four, week five is, is sort of more about, um, uh, your, your body in terms of, um, doing some breath work. We're doing some anxiety, breath work, uh, and exercise. Um, this is also important to help you deal with the trauma of things. Uh, and then the last, uh, week is is rewriting your story. This is also week one of my my larger program, which I will get to next. And and this is based on narrative therapy. And, and this is something that I personally went through with Dr. MC McDonald. She personally coached me, uh, I think it was six weeks of narrative therapy. And I gotta tell you, man, it's it was for me, it was really, really, I don't want to say game changer. That, that makes it sound like a cure-all, but it was it was significantly helpful for me dealing with some shit from my childhood. It was really, really helpful. So uh, that's that's the last and final week in the triage program. So what's it cost, Michael? Uh, good question. <laughs> so uh, for the first, and I, I know this is going to sound gimmicky, I, and I, I guess I apologize in advance, but I want to make sure I limit it to to the right amount. If if I get 500 people that sign up for this thing, and by the way, that, that there are more than 500 of you listening now from what I can see, which is, uh, I, I, I'll, again, I'll wait till the end of the year to get to some of the numbers, but holy fucking shit. Um, but if that's the case, I can't help 500 fucking people. So I want to, I'm going to leave it to the first five people that sign up for this program if they do. And I know this sounds very like fucking salesy and I, I apologize for that, but uh, it's 300 bucks. Uh, one time shot, 300 bucks. If you need payments, reach out and we'll figure that out. But with six weeks, payments would be a little wonky. Um, I'll get to the other program. You can definitely make payments there, but, um, 300 bucks, it will, will get you this six weeks of support. And so what, what else does that get you in, in uh, maybe I should wait for the next program, but, but fuck it. I'll cover it here too. You get entrance into a private Facebook group where there are guys going through this already. And there are already, there are guys that have been through my next, uh, program that I'll explain that are in there and it can help support you. Um, so you, you'll get that, you'll get access to, uh, we'll also do uh, meetings that will be set up, weekly meetings for you to come and 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 share and learn from the guys that have been through the other program and, and from other folks going through the program at the same time as you. So um, that is also included with this. Um, 
and, and it's also uh, part of the the next program which i think i can just go ahead and get to that one i think uh i think that covers the triage program uh for for the next five so the first five people 300 bucks for the next five it'll be 500 bucks um and i think i'll limit it that honestly i don't think i could take on more than 10 I, i'm 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 not <laughs> even sure if i could take on 10 if i'm being honest but if i can't uh you know you wouldn't be charged if we got to the point where it was like i can't help you then i'm not going to take your fucking money so again payment plans could be taken for this program but with six weeks it's just i don't know how you how we would make that work but we could figure out something the next program is, is the big one it's it's i've titled it forged by fire because um i think that what we are going through is that it is a, a forging it is a fire we our lives have been burnt down and we can look at that in a, in a few ways and you can look at it as a phoenix right obviously <laughs> all right you rise from the ashes ashes become your fuel but you also can look at it that your your uh the fire has made you molten right like steel and then you can be shaped into anything you want steel is hard and it's uh rigid and it's um you know I don't want to say indestructible because that's wrong, but it's some, you know, it's obviously some tough fucking shit. They build, build all kinds of shit with it, but they melt it in the beginning, right? And that's what this program does, I think, is it allows you to take a new shape to become a new person. And so that's why I chose that name. Obviously, it fits the sort of the Phoenix and the fire theme, but it also does allow you to become something else and someone else. And I think that you'll find through this 16 week program that you, you will become someone else. You will learn a fuck ton about yourself. So let's start with week one. Uh, oh, and by the way, so um, I'll cover that at the end. <laughs> week one is rewriting your story. It's the same as uh, week six in the triage program. It's narrative therapy. It's writing your story. And I won't go into the details of all these weeks. I'll do that in the future. And I was going to talk about that, That's, but I stopped myself. I'll talk about it later. Um. You're going to rewrite your story. You're going to write it and you're going to rewrite it. And I got to tell you, man, this helped me a ton. Like I said, I worked with Dr. MT McDonald with this uh, look up narrative therapy. It's fucking, it really helped me. Uh, so that's week one. Week two is movement and motion. This is, it's really about getting into your body, but more in an exercise type capacity. Uh, as Dr. MT McDonald says in episode 18, 20 minutes a day of exercise is recommended when you're going through a trauma. So that's going to be part of it. It's going to be talking about, uh, what types of exercise? Um, again, there's accountability a little bit with other guys in there that have, have been through this program can help you and, and uh, remind you or push you to make sure you're doing your 20 minutes. It could be just walking. That's fine. Uh, there are other and perhaps better ways, but 20 minutes every day. And we cover that uh, in the week two. Uh, and I'll get to the assignments. I forgot. I'll get to that at the end. Uh, week three is processing emotions through your body. So again, it's very similar to, well, that's not very similar. It's exactly the same. There's a little bit more information. There's breathing exercises and stuff in the triage program, but it's it's more about, um, um, yeah, you know, I'm sorry, that was uh, <laughs> similar to week three, not the uh, not the, not the breath work stuff. Uh, apologies. Uh, it, it's, just, it's very similar to the alpha code. Again, it's getting out of your head and into your body. And there are assignments with all this stuff and I'll get to that. Uh, week four is about connecting dots to your past. This is about uh, finding things that you did wrong in the marriage and try and connect that back to your past. And and why you do that is to relieve some pressure off yourself, to, to understand that you might have made mistakes and done some shitty things, but it's not because you are a shitty person. It's because those are the skills or the tools or the habits that you had. And where did they come from? Well, they, they come from your past. So it's good to kind of connect those dots. It takes the pressure off yourself. And we do a lot of this program really is about introspection and reflection. And then talking about those things, talking about what you're seeing and what you're finding when you're really taking a close look at yourself and, and, and your entire life. So that is week four. Uh, week five is shedding shame. So as I say, shame does not survive sunlight. So it's really about getting in front of your brothers on live videos and talking about your shame and shedding it and killing it. Cause that's what shame doesn't survive sunlight. It, you, you talk about it, it kills it. So that's what really that week is about. And again, I'll get to the assignments I promise, but you, you got a little hint there. You're going to be doing some live videos, but it's a closed group, completely closed, completely private. So, uh, it is to your benefit to to talk about things that you're ashamed of in a supportive environment so you can get rid of and kill that shame. 
Uh, the next the next week, week six, is removing anchors from the past. <clears throat> this is a fun week for me. Um, it can involve burning shit, <laughs> which is always fun. Um, not houses, nothing like, like that. Um, it's more about finding, if you show choose, you can burn things. You don't have to. You don't, Not everyone's a pyromaniac like myself, I guess. But, <laughs> but it's about taking things that remind you of your old life and getting rid of them. So it could be pictures of your ex up on your wall. Get fucking rid of that thing. It could be uh, a jacket that she bought you. Get fucking rid of that thing. It's about removing things that are anchoring you into your past. And so uh, I I really enjoy that week. I really enjoy seeing people shedding their uh, and getting rid of their their anchors. It's really it's really fucking awesome. Uh, week seven is about identifying specific negative behavior. So this is you know again there's some journaling involved in this program. I forgot to mention that it's 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 really about this that week week seven is really about finding out as specifically as you can what are the things that you did wrong you know you gave the silent treatment but when you know, what specifically it's really about sort of identifying your triggers i guess in some ways but also just some shit that you did that just you want to change uh, or it was brought to your attention and you got to be careful with that but uh, by, by her you got to be careful with that but but that is a source of data so it's about being specific though about those things because if you get specific about your your negative behaviors you can then do some some specific you can take some specific actions in order to to uh to, to make changes really uh the other uh sorry the other the, the, the next week week eight is about catching your negative thoughts this is again journaling is, is important when you have a negative thought write it down and and this allows you to do a couple of things. One, it allows you to see specifically what are these negative thoughts. Again, specific specificity is so very fucking important. So then you know, and you might be able to start seeing a thread too. By the way, um, you write your story and see all these negatives, and then you know you start paying attention to how this makes you think and feel, and and what you're thinking and feeling, and, and you're journaling and you're writing that, writing these things down, and you can connect it to the past, and then you can get specific about it. It's it's really is about self reflection, introspection, and taking a, a really guard, really good hard look at yourself. So once you catch these negative thoughts, um, that that's that's step one. Uh, it's sort of in that changing your mindset process. If you don't know how to catch your negative thoughts, if you don't know how to stop and and recognize, oh shit, that was negative. You're never going to get to the other portion, which is changing that negative thought. So so step one in that process is it's catching them, and then that is covered in, in week eight of the program. Um, week nine is, is acceptance and change. As you go through this process, you, you're going to learn a lot about yourself and you might realize there's some things you just have to accept. Um, I, I don't know what those are. That's up to you to decide, but that's where you sort of make some determinations and you ask yourself some questions. Is this something I really want to change or can I accept it? And that's what that week is kind of all about. The next week is about responsibility. Week 10, responsibility and control. Now you've decided, okay, I want to make changes about this. Are you taking full responsibility and can you take full responsibility? Because some things you can't control. So you want to make sure if you're making a decision about changing something, make sure it's within your control. You can say, I want to change my co-parenting relationship. Okay, you can do something. You can control how you do, and how you behave, but you can't control her. So it's just about checking in and making sure because you don't want to set yourself up for failure. You, you don't want to say, I'm going to change a co-parenting relationship. And then she remains difficult and shitty and then you feel like a failure but at the end of the day you can't control her so it's just that week's all about just getting clarity and making sure and then week 11 is about taking action okay you're you're you've decided and you've, you've taken responsibility you can control uh you know your your actions your your responsibilities and and you're going to take action and this is because you got so specific with some of these things you can take specific actions uh, if it is a co-parenting relationship and you realize you're half of it you can start uh, taking steps to uh, make sure that that relationship gets to the point where you want it to be. You can say, you know, I want to set a boundary and make sure, and, and boundaries are covered in this too, but you, you know, or, or at least you want to make sure that you um, don't yell at her at certain points or whatever. You, you know what I'm saying? You you can get specific and then you start, start taking specific actions. Okay. So I want to <clears throat> not yell. Well, why did I yell? Well, it looks like here, you know, looking back at some of these weeks, you know, when she does this, that's when I yell. And, and why is that? Well, because it reminds me of my parents or whatever. 
And so then you can start saying, okay, well, how do I avoid this? What do I do? What actions can I take to, to make sure I don't get to the point where I do yell or to recognize, again, catching negative thoughts. If you can get good at catching thoughts, oh shit, that here it comes again. I'm starting to feel like I'm going to start yelling. What can I do? Uh, okay, I'm going to walk away. And, and boundaries, again, is covered. And that's sort of part of this. But um, you start taking specific action to change specific things. So that's week 11. Week 12 is a little bit of a break from doing uh, a lot of self-reflection. It's called connecting with others. And that um, requires you to reach out to some folks, either some folks from your past and catch them up on your life, old friends, or reach out to some folks that have helped you through this. Could be guys in the support group and just say, hey, thank you. I appreciate you. It just gets you to um, recognize that other folks in your life are important and you need to make the effort to reach out and connect with them. It's really critical uh, to, to your life. Um, and so the other part of the uh, next part of that in some kind of ways, uh, week 13 is setting boundaries. So if you reach out to someone who was an asshole in your past, but you want to try and make up uh, or, or, or reconcile or whatever, you still have to have boundaries and make sure that they don't hurt you again. And so setting boundaries is, is definitely a critical and key component to relationships period. And so we'll, we'll cover that in week 13. Week 14 is about uh, attachment styles and love languages. It's about sort of learning more about how you interact with other people, how you feel loved, how you feel appreciated. What are the things that uh, can cause issues in your relationship? Um, you know, your future relationship. That is definitely a requirement, by the way. If you're in the Forged by Fire program, you can't date unless you're already dating. That's fine, but you have to stop serial dating while you're going through this program it's four months i promise you your penis won't fall off you're gonna be okay so no dating while you're in the program um so that's week 14 it's it's really about learning about your attachment style so that you can use that knowledge to uh further or um strengthen a, a relationship you can say hey i get i my attachment style is a bit anxious and and it's you know, I get anxious when this happens and, you know, could you help me through that or whatever, whatever scenario it is, um, you know, I'd like to get texts once an hour. I mean, I don't know if that's appropriate, but you work with that other person and you can work with them because you know where you are and who you are. So that's that's week 14. Week 15 is defining your values. That's uh, really important. The values are so if you know who you are and what your values are, it can shape you. It can it can allow you uh, knowledge to make informed decisions so if uh someone says i don't know hey do you want to um i don't know take a fucking road trip or 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 you know go backpacking and you're like well connection is an important value to me and I, i'm sure that would be a connecting experience so yeah let's do that or if you're like um that just has no interest to you its connection is not a value uh, maybe there's some other value you know, if, if you have a decision to make about, you know, should I go backpacking with this dude or go to a homeless shelter and help feed the homeless people and, and, you know, connection or love is, is, is uh, a, a part of your value system, then you would choose the one that best fits your values. So, but first you have to define them. It's like anything it's, you have to figure out what are my values. And so that's what week 15 does. And then week 16, the last week is, it's new goal setting. It's okay. We've gotten through this fucking program and it's, it's long haul Four four months is a long time, but, and it's, there are going to be moments when you're, you're going to hate the process. Like you're going to, you're going to dig up some things. You're going to deal with some things, but when you get to the end, you're going to feel invigorated because you've done something. You want to raise your self-esteem, get some shit done. This is going to get some shit done. And then when you get to the end, you're going to feel like you achieved something and that's going to launch you to set a new goal for something in your life. And like any goal that you want to achieve it has to be specific. So that's what cover is covered in week 16. So that is it. That is the Forged by Fire program. If you are interested, uh, please reach out. You can get me at michael at divorce-mens-network.com. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. Thank you to Nick Coyle and Lifer for allowing me to use their song, Born Again, which you're hearing now and at the intro to the podcast. Thank you to Justin Dillahanty and all of my brothers at The Alpha Code. Please visit the website, risingphoenixpodcast.com to connect with me and other like-minded men who are looking to thrive and grow after their divorce. And remember to surround yourself with people who add value to your life, who challenge you to be greater than you were yesterday, who sprinkle magic into your existence like you do to theirs. Life 
is not meant to be done alone. Find your tribe. Take care.
So what's what's it going to cost? The this program is uh, it, just like the other one. There, there are going to be tiers in terms of uh, the first five will be uh, five hundred bucks one time upfront payment. We'll, we'll get you into the program. If you want to pay monthly, it will it will go to six hundred bucks a month because of uh, adding um, uh, twenty five bucks uh, a month to to the cost. So it'll be six hundred dollars total again for the first five, and then for uh, the second five it'd be 750 bucks if you want to pay that one one time or you can pay it monthly and again i would jack it up to 850 so that's it that's the cost that's the overview so going forward the next uh, couple of months uh, i'm going to do episodes that probably they'll probably be shorter that will cover each week in a little little bit more detail um it will get you hopefully a better snapshot of, of the program but it also it 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 covers things that are relevant to going through this. So it's not just, I mean, it's partially an advertisement for the plan, I suppose, but it really is good content because if I talk about shedding shame, if I talk about an episode about how to do that and some of the things and the whys, and maybe I can find some studies and, and, and bring some data to it, I can explain why, why it's a good thing to get in a group of men to do a live video and talk about things you're ashamed of and how fucking beneficial that is. So you'll see over the next, probably, I don't know, I'm not going to do the next uh, 16 episodes in a row or, or not going to be um, on my coaching program. That's just not going to happen. Uh, a, I already have some recorded that I need to edit and get out. And, and B, um, I don't love doing solo episodes I should say, I, I haven't loved. I'm, I'm starting to enjoy it a little bit more, but I also don't like to force them. I do them when I feel there is need. So, and I also don't think, quite frankly, you don't need to hear each week in detail to decide that you want to start this program. If you want to reinvent yourself by learning and changing yourself, then this program is for you, for sure. Again, it's not going to fix you. I can't fix you. No fucking buddy can fix you. You can fix you, not me, not anybody else, not no program, no, no uh, coach is going to do that. They, if people can help, but it's going to be up to you to to dig in. And so uh, speaking of digging in, digging in, the assignments are you're mostly you're going to be doing live videos. You're going to, well, you're going to do, you know, a lot of reflection and, and introspection, and you're going to think about some questions for the week. Like, um, you know, when you rewrite your story, when you, you're going to write, write it first and you're going to be as honest as you can and, and as brutal as you can. Like, where did you fuck up in this? Um, you're, you're going to ask yourself some, some hard questions. What did I do wrong? What was my part in this? Because by the way, if you re if you write your story and it's just, well, she's a liar and she's a cheater and she did this and she did that. I can't help you. You can't help you. Nobody can help you. And, and that isn't to say that she had no part in it. We've covered that before. You guys know this, but it's to say that this is what I have. This is what I brought to the table. This is what I fucked up. And thus, this is the only thing that I can do. This is what I can work on is these things here. And so you're going to, you're going to ask yourself a lot of questions. You're going to be brutally honest, but that's awesome because that gives you insight into what you need to change. And so um, that's, that's sort of the, the, the point of the program. And, and I, I hope um, that, Many of you take it, quite frankly, and not because I need to make money. To be quite honest with you, the money that would come, I'll probably put right back into all of this. I have done zero ads for the website. I have done I haven't done ads for the podcast in I don't even know, year and a half, maybe. I think the first six months of the podcast, I did like a, a Facebook ad. I might have done a Google ad too, just for like a month or two. So it would probably be a lot of that. It, uh, it also will be put into the, the Divorce Men's Network groups that are being created um, to, to create some literature and, and pamphlets and stuff. And I do at some point still plan on writing a book to, uh, to, to help us through this, but not, I don't know. Originally I wasn't, I had no interest and I'm still struggling with that, but I do think I would like to put out something and maybe it'll just be a pamphlet. But once we get into these Divorce Men Network meetings, we're going to have to figure out what are we talking about? I'm not talking about uh, writing the big book, the AA version of this, but but something of that nature, but more a guidebook for our meetings. And I have some ideas around that and stuff, and that'll happen uh, eventually. But but that's where the money's probably would go, um, unless there is an overwhelming amount of you, then 
you know, maybe I'll buy myself a nice dinner. <laughs> but at this point, um, I would, I'd like to grow this thing and make it something that would allow me to not have to work a typical bullshit job for corporate America, if I'm being honest. So, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I don't have to do this. I, I want to. And so because I don't have to, you're not going to, I'm not going to cram it down your throat. I'm just not going to do that. I'll probably make a post today in the divorce, divorce support for men, uh, Facebook group sort of announcing, um, you know, here's the, here's the, um, uh, episode and, and here's some info on the coaching program. Oh, by the way, there is a website, uh, rising Phoenix, the sorry, rising Phoenix, divorce coach.com. You'll it's very basic. It's literally like two pages. It does give you an overview of the programs. Um, it it explains everything. It, I don't think I have the cost in there, and it wasn't. Um, and I don't. I don't like to to be that kind of person, so I wasn't trying to intentionally hide it. Um, clearly, but uh, so if you if you have uh, other questions or, or 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 you need if you want to read over everything that I read, which I can I'm sure you can probably tell I was reading. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can tell that I was reading some because uh, that's like what is that uh, twenty two weeks worth of shit that I had to remember. Um, so I, I printed it out, but if you want to read essentially what I did print out, just go to rising Phoenix, divorce coach.com. And, and if you want to learn more, you can also schedule a call there, a, a zoom call. We can get together and talk um, just to make sure it is a good fit. Maybe it isn't again. I don't, I don't need to do this. So I don't want to do it for people that wouldn't fit the program. I don't want your money. If, if you're, if we're not on the same page uh, with certain things or, if I suspect maybe you're not going to be committed because I want to help you, but I, I can't help you if you're not committed. So let's make sure we're on the same page. You can schedule a call and you can ask anything. Again, you can always, I'm sure a lot of you are friends on Facebook with me. You can always reach out there. Michael at divorce-mens-network.com. You can also email me there. So uh, that's it. That's it for this one. I hope you're all well. Uh, I do have a few more recorded and they will be coming out. Uh, in the relatively near future, I have to figure out editing. I lost my editor. I don't know where he went. So uh, if any of you out there edit videos and, and want to help, that would be great. I can pay you. Not a lot, but I can, I can pay you. Uh, you know, reach out again uh, at the previously mentioned email. So that's it. That's all I got. Um, you know, continue to reach out. Continue to ask for and provide support if you need it. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other.